we're here for all Albertans, Canadians. We're here fighting for the freedoms of not us, but our kids, our grandkids, the future of this province, this country. Three Albertans could now face a collective 30 years behind bars for their alleged involvement in the unwaveringly peaceful Coots blockade. This demonstration was part of a decentralized movement across Canada against COVID health regulations and vaccine mandates from all levels of government. Coots blockade events saw COVID restrictions lift in Alberta and catalyzed former Premier Jason Kenney's stepping down as the province's United Conservative Party's leader. This movement forever altered the course of politics here in Alberta and showed the importance of peaceful demonstrations against government overreach. Months later, the RCMP alleged three individuals, Alex, Marco and George, to have been key participants of the blockade. All three were consequently charged with mischief over $5,000. And each could now face 10 years behind bars, separating them from their families for what could be a decade. And we think there's something not right about these men potentially having to face this life-altering sentence. That's why we're doing everything we can at Rebel News to help. At no cost to them, we have Williamson Law fighting for these men tirelessly in the courts, made possible because of your donations at truckerdefensefund.ca. If you'd like to help offset the massive legal undertaking these men now face, I encourage you to go to truckerdefensefund.ca. Tens of thousands of Albertans and even more Canadians across the country stood up over the last two years to voice their concerns of health regulations gone too far. Still, out of spite, the government continues to punish those who saw faults with their draconian health measures. On February 14th, after 18 days in Coots, demonstrators decidedly ended the blockade to emphatically express that this was a peaceful movement. After the events of yesterday and the news released that the RCMP um, made arrests and come forward with um, an arrest resulted in long arm, firearms, handguns, and protective equipment um, being unearthed. We as the Coots Convoy have decided that as a peaceful protest and to maintain that narrative, we will be rolling out tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. At their last court appearance on November 4th, we spoke with Alex, Marco, and George directly to find out how they felt about this situation they've now been thrown into. We also spoke with Chad Williamson of Williamson Law, who is being crowdfunded through truckerdefensefund.ca. He gave us a little more insight into the case that lays ahead. So the uh, prosecutors have uh, decided to proceed by indictment, uh, which gives Mr. Van Herc, uh, Mr. Jansen, and Master Hugenboss the right to be tried by a jury of their peers. We believe that 12 randomly chosen representative jurors reflect the common sense, the values, and the conscience of this community uh, in, and, and are, is very important in this case. Once disclosure has been properly received, we'll proceed to trial by jury immediately. There will be no deals and no concessions of any kind. Yeah. You were just inside the courthouse. What was your takeaway from the day's events? Well, I mean, it was very straightforward. There was not much that was discussed, but I mean, it's just one further step to going further in the in the whole uh, jury trial. So, because they didn't have the disclosure uh, available for us to look at, so we weren't able to plea. Um, they had to do an arraignment to postpone it to December 12th. When you tie up uh, logistics assets and things like that for a receipt, you know technical and, and procedural things to this extent, uh, I think, what's the point? Can we just get on with this? Um, we're not, nobody's, nobody's saying we're not, look, you know, we're not looking to go to trial, etc. But the, um, the, the back and forth is employing um, tens and tens of individuals on both sides of these, uh, of these charges. And to me, that, uh, that's completely unnecessary. When it comes to Williamson Law, are they doing their due diligence in helping you? Absolutely. We're very thankful for the support that we're getting from them. Uh, I don't know who else I would trust other than Chad and his team there, for sure. Yes, 100%. Um, Yoav represents me. He's on the ball. Um, he is the lawyer that I need. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm evolved. I'm going to be looking over his shoulder. And he, he is that kind of lawyer. He's We've connected big time. And there's nothing that 
I, I have questions on that doesn't get answered. There's no misunderstandings. Oh, 100%. William Law has been 100% uh, backing us on everything we, we've asked. Uh, they're fighting hard for us. And I believe the Crown that's dealing with this case has definitely been a little hard to deal with. And, but they've also added an additional amount of evidence, they claim, to the disclosures. So they got more evidence coming against us. So, more evidence. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I thought they had enough, but... And the reason for this prosecution is not law, it's politics, it's vengeance, it's punishment. This was done under the former regime, Jason Kenney, who took an extreme approach to lockdowns. He's the one who threw Pastor Arthur Pavlovsky in prison for nearly 50 days. The prosecutor, Stephen Johnson, here was involved in that prosecution of Arthur Pavlovsky. That must be undone. There's a presumption of innocence in this country, which is fundamental to uh, the natural sense of justice and is fundamental to our democracy. Um, obviously, these folks need to be presumed innocent until the Crown does their work to attempt to prove that they're guilty. We think they're going to have an uphill battle in that regard, but, you know, again, we're very, at the very early outsets of this matter. The Crown is essentially, as you know, elected to have this heard by indictment rather than summary proceedings, which means that it gets elevated to the Court of King's Bench. Now, obviously, that can carry more serious penalties, but it also gives these fellows uh, the right to be tried by a jury of their peers. So today, on the record, we'd, we entered our election uh, on behalf of our clients to have this tried by a jury. And we feel that, uh, you know, the common sense, uh, the integrity, um, and the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the overall reasonableness of a jury of their peers could bring maybe some uh, maybe some semblance of, uh, uh, of sanity to these proceedings. So on December 12th, uh, we're elevating this to the Court of King's Bench uh, and uh, what's called an arraignment will take place where we essentially set the record and begin proceedings and start uh, setting a procedure uh, for the rest of the litigation in this matter. So it'll be another procedural hearing, um, but it's gonna be interesting and, uh, and we'll start uh, moving down uh, the full course of this thing at that point. Chad is being crowdfunded through truckerdefensefund.ca so that these men don't have to worry about legal financing. If you want to help them, that's where you can go to donate. We'll follow up with Chad after December 12th to find out how this case is unfolding. And lastly, I'll leave you with a message from Alex, Marco, and George from when we last spoke in November. For Rebel News, Sydney Fizard. Don't be afraid. Stand up for truth. Do what's right. It's... Uh it's what we were made for, um, you know, for an example, for our children, the future of uh, other Canadians or across the world as well. Uh, stand for truth. This is a bigger fight. This is about government overreach. Uh, we can talk about many different avenues, but this is, was in relation to COVID. Those in power made mistakes and it wasn't just mistakes, there was intent and that has to be dealt with, that has to be exposed. Uh, I'm aware of a citizen's inquiry that's getting underway. Um, our Premier Daniel Smith is pushing back against the Health Act violations, etc. The people have, their, their, their trust has been abused, their health has been abused, their freedom has been abused, and for us to ever trust those in authority again, that has to be dealt with. I feel an inquiry needs to happen. Uh, and like an independent inquiry into what happened in the last three years, who was re responsible and who was accountable. There's got to be accountability. We're being held to account uh, for the alleged charges that, that we got charged with. So why are they not being held to account for what was happened with them? I mean, there's a lot of charges being dropped. So, you know, there were things that happened uh, unjustly. So now let's find out who who started this and who did that. The legal fees to defend Alex, Marco, and George are insane, but we're not going to let them pay for a dime of it. Rebel News is covering this entirely, but we need your help to do so. And if you want to chip in, go to truckerdefensefund.ca. Alternatively, if you want to support these guys by other means, we have a petition you can sign that will drop off to the new Premier, Daniel Smith, to show her just how many people see how wrong these charges are. And on top of that, through truckerdefensefund.ca, you can send her an email directly to make sure she hears that these men are not the criminals mainstream media and the feds are trying to make them out to be.